baby, I can't believe my eyes. The market doesn't care about what inflation anymore. We are on a rocket ship to the freaking moon. For those of you that love dividend stocks, we got to talk about the opportunities that still exist here, even with this insane rally and tech stocks somehow in this rally are crashing. There's a lot of tech companies that have been correcting that haven't been bringing down the broader mark. If you're owning the broader indices like the VOO, you're, you're still propelling to all time highs. Beautiful thing. This is why cost averaging just works. But if this is a conversation you need to appreciate, damn it, hit that like button, baby, because man, what a weird, surreal time we live in. And it's a beautiful, beautiful year to be an investor, especially if you were buying the dips over the last year. But take a look because UN, US inflation ticked a bit higher in February, driven basically by rent and gas. And these are all like lagging contributing factors. We've talked about this. Gas obviously has been going up a little bit. I mean, we've seen the oil prices kind of just trickling to the upside. But one of the major factors has all obviously been rent because there's a lagging you know, effect to raising interest rates because it takes time for mortgage renewals to come up to be affected by the higher rates. If you're a landlord, you're going to have to raise the rents to justify the property or you'd have to sell it. A lot of the property markets are still a little bit slower than usual, but prices have stabilized. And in some cases, like even in Ontario, heading into a hot spring market where prices are likely to go up, there's no reason the government's going to jump the gun on raising interest rates in this kind of environment. And it's important to recognize that over you know the 12 months is what contributes to the totality of what the inflation number is. And we can see we've been lagging to the downside month over month, and we've been getting more down periods than upper periods. So on a consistent basis, we are still heading in the right direction. There's really nothing, in my opinion, to be overly overly concerned by this. It's just that at this point, people have adjusted. Whoever got laid off got laid off. You know, the economy still seems relatively strong. The, the government's just not going to cut. The Fed's not cutting rates. Canadian banks probably not going to cut rates here anytime soon. And you take a look at what this has done for the S&P on a day where this terrible news hits and we're still holding up. We're down today, uh, what, barely a 0.1 percentage point on the month. We're still up 4.23% on the year, 8.8%. That's like the entirety of some gains in most markets in a year. You look at the S&P TSX here, up 6.7% in the last month, outpacing the US year to date up 5.3%, so not in the same basket, but with the dividend you're collecting, which is much broader, you're pretty much in line, mostly driven probably by oil prices because the TSX is largely encompassed with banks, financials, and oil companies. Now, I'm loving this because my portfolio is holding strong. Uh, SCHD is now up 4.26% this month. It's been one of the worst performing, um, you know, dividend ETS because it doesn't encompass Microsoft or Apple or, you know, something like a DGRO might, which would be like a, a you know, a kind of a growth, a, a dividend growth ETF. But I still think there's good discounts in this ETF. I still like it. I'm holding it. And it's been a, just slowly trickling to the upside while collecting me some juicy income. If you are a VDY holder, like my wife currently is, as I'm looking to buy back into this, my fiance is a champ of steadfast you know, attention and or doesn't move anything. I'm rambling words together, but the Canadian markets have been just propelling here. I mean, the last month for 7% gain at a VDY. I mean, what's the dividend on this now? Um, let's just take a quick look here. Um, Cause I imagine the opportunity of getting over 5% yield has gone. Now we're down to about 4.7. So yeah, I mean, but we're still in the upper bounds of unusually high dividend yields, especially with a lot of the companies that were increasing dividends into the end of the year. We got Apple here on the tech side, guys. Let's start talking about tech and then we'll talk a little bit about some of these individual stocks and you know Canadian dividend stocks because Apple is just you know plummeted. I mean, plummeted for Apple for being the king of once was the S&P number one company for over a decade is now down 13 percent. Uh, it's kind of doing these very cyclical, you know, bounces where it'll drop 15 to 20 percent and then rebound about 15 or 20 percent kind of stuck in this range. And it probably is likely going to continue to be because there's just no growth. Um, unfortunately, there's no major you know, revenue growth. Earnings are only keeping up because of share buybacks, cost reductions things of that nature. You look at this bottom chart here and it's been abysmal for Apple. But again, you could see that as an opportunity for when an interest rate cut cycle comes. And I've argued that Apple actually hasn't reached parity with the market. A lot of people think it's following GDP these days. Very well likely could be. But I still think, you know, when you look a decade from now, 
20 years from now, if Apple starts dipping between the 20 and 25 PE multiple, I think you're looking at a fairly good buying opportunity. But for me at this point, I would probably wait till about earnings because if the trend remains your friend, earnings is going to be a dictating factor to what this looks like. But that's why I've been buying things like Google instead. Google trading at roughly the same multiple when you look at its earnings growth here, for some reason, people think Google should be worth what Apple's worth. On a, again, price to earnings multiple, not a market cap multiple or you know market cap value, two different companies. But still, I mean, you're talking about a company that has never seen a decline in revenue growth consistently. I don't know why it's trading down here because everyone thinks AI is going to replace Google search. I don't think that happens tomorrow. I think this company is going to continue to post great numbers and eventually it's going to be actualized in the, the stock price. So we'll see, right? It dipped. I didn't buy any of the dip to 130. wasn't enough. And now we're back above from where I initially bought it. Now, Tesla, on the other hand, I'm down about 12% on from my average buy of around 190. And this is really caught in a trend, which I am so thankful for because we are now back into the 30s. And the last time Tesla was at a 30, I think the last dip was to a 34 times multiple was this massive dump here when it hit about 113, you know, in the, in the 1, 110 area. I think we can get back there, but I have a hard time believing we stay there because Tesla has a cult following. I know a lot of people that said they would buy it at 100, which is why I don't think we get to 100. But if I had to guess, I would say somewhere between 1, 150 is where this thing is going to settle. Next earnings will be a dictating factor. If nothing comes out of the sidelines, if nothing crazy happens that builds more hype, the stock probably will continue to go down if the higher interest rate market continues to affect these companies like Apple and like Tesla because they're high valued products, as I mentioned time and time again. So I will be uh, buying this at hopes of under 150. I'll wait a little bit, be somewhat patient here. I got a good starter position, right? But let's talk about the crown jewels, the cojones of the market. Uh, of course, Microsoft, right? Um, you know, at a $3 trillion market cap at 37 times multiple, when you take a look at the current revenue of this company holding all time highs, is it justified? Honestly, you know, it's kind of back to where it was prior at this kind of mid-teen growth. But let's just take a look at Microsoft's uh, PE history based on macro trends here because we're trading in an unusual area that is much higher than any time in Microsoft's history. There's been no time realistically in the last decade where Microsoft has ever sustained this high of a price to earnings multiple. Now, obviously revenue is growing, we're at a good clip, but even if you go back to when, you know, we were at a good era of like before the pandemic, you know, we were seeing pretty much cons similar consistent, you know, earnings growth, but we were trading at a 25 to 30 times multiple. So I can't justify Microsoft on an individual basis any more than I can, you know, justify NVIDIA here. I think you need to be super careful. And even if you're buying the broader indice like the VOO, you don't have to worry. If these companies tank, the bottom half of the market will likely stabilize because, again, we've seen Apple tank and it was the crown jewel and it's not bringing the market down with it. Right. So you got some stability, especially when companies like Amazon that are a little more diverse and other industries are continuing to maintain as well. But on the Canadian side of the border, I still think some of the best buying opportunities are going to be in your banks, in your, you know, VDY like stocks. Um, I really love the Horizon Equal Weight Bank ETF here. We can start seeing this recovery. It's beautiful from the lows. Congrats to anybody that bought this because it's up 23% right now. Royal Bank, you know, is going to start retesting some all time highs here soon. It's only down 7% now. You know, Bank of Nova Scotia, some of these stocks that are starting to get back to a more nominalized era area, I still think are trading at relative discounts. Um, especially when you take a look, if you use dividend yield as a historical value for the company. And when I mean historical value, I mean throughout the entirety of the last 20 years, Bank of Nova Scotia has kind of traded in line with around a 4 to 5% yield. And only as of recently, it's been trading above 6%. So I like the banks. You can get a really great average yield across these. And I also like VDY, where you can get a lot of that exposure. So I mean, if I had to pick, I still think dividend plays are something that you're you're starting to lose sight of these high yields. You know, a lot of the Canadian banks increase dividends. A lot of Canadian stocks increase dividends. So we're going to still see a bit of a higher yield expectation. But I would continue to buy these as aggressively as you can. Keep cost averaging to the broader markets. And if you find some of these dips like I'm finding, take advantage of them because I still think you know there's going to be some great opportunity in companies like Google, like Tesla. These are just my opinion. You do not have to agree. Companies like Apple. But I'd love to know what you think in that comment section below.